Hello everyone, my name is Tayen, and in today's video we are going to compare the halt calculations with a steel truss um, made with the uh, Indian steel code IS800-2007 uh, with S-Frames steel design model and we're going to see how each compare and how STL optimizes these processes. So we begin with uh, the truss configuration that we have in the program. As you can see, this is a nine meter elevation truss um, that goes along 25 meter span. We have um, high total height of the truss of 3.5 meters and um, we have designed this uh, truss with different web configurations as you can see here. You can see that we have inputted this uh, same geometry in S-frame. We have added the supports so let's start with the loading conditions. For a six meter base, we begin with our dead loads. Now, all of these factors and coefficients are obtained from the IS uh, 800-2007. So with the roof do dead load, we have a uh, 0.21 uh, kilograms per our 25 span on our six meter base, we have a total of 31.5 kilonewtons. And then we add the weight of the purlin, and that adds up at 10.5 kilonewton meters. When we assume that it's a 70 newton meter uh, weight. Now we also need to add the self weight of the truss, uh, that adds to a 20 kilonewton meter. So the total dead load is going to be 62.0 kilonewton. When we take that total dead load and divide it among our 20 uh, base, we're going to have the intermediate nodal dead loads or W1 as you can see represented here in this diagram of 3.1 kilonewton and the dead load at the end nodes it's going to be that W1 divided by 2. So when we take 3.1 divided by 2 we have a 1.55 kilonewton uh, load. Now we have represented that uh, loading condition in our uh, model here. Here we have the dead load and uh, we have 3.1 kilonewtons acting downwards and 1.55 kilonewtons uh, at the end joints. So now for the live load. We have an imposed load um, and uh, we're going to take this coefficient of 0.35 kilonewton per square meter from the IS875. So um, we calculate the load at the intermediate nodes, which is going to be W2. 0.35 per 6 of our uh, base per 1.25, which is a coefficient, gives us a load at the intermediate nodes of 2.63 kilonewtons um, and then we take this and divide it by two uh, to get the load at the end nodes which is 1.32 we have also represented this as a live load here in the program 2.63 at the intermediate nodes and 1.32 at the end nodes now when it comes to the wind load uh, we also take the information from the IS875 um, code and we have a basic wind speed of 50 meter per second and um, we are going to uh, consider some critical wind loads for this analysis. So we're going to take all of our um, wind angles at zero so uh, we're going to have uh, four different values. Um, 
for the left side on the intermediate nodes, which is going to be W3, we're going to have a 16.2 kilonewton. And at the nth node on that same side, it's going to be that divided by two. So it's a 8.1. And when it comes to the right side or the leeward um, side, um, it's going to be a 9.1 kilonewton. And the end node is going to be that divided by two. So it's going to be 4.55. Uh, kilonewtons. So we also have that represented here as the. So we also have that represented here as a wind load. As you can see, 16.2 on the left side, 8.1 on the end node. Now, this particularly, the wind loads are going upwards, just as in the diagram. The same goes for the right side and the end node. And then here in the middle joint, we have the sum of 8.1 plus 4.55 that gives us a total of 12.6 so with that done we can go ahead and run an analysis in s -frame. we got a clean analysis also just to mention that we created two load combinations um, to represent better the action of all these loads uh, in the frame. Now we have these load combinations here. It's a life load and a death load uh, combined, so uh, it represents better everything. So once we have these, we can take a look at the individual results, the individual um, analysis for each of the members and um, so remember that we can take any of these members take a look at the properties and compare here our results so we take these results to design uh, our members okay so um, when we take these results we can uh, provide with some member uh, designs okay so when it comes to one of the uh, members in the top chord uh, from here it's uh, member GH we can see from the results that it has a maximum compressive force of 174.1 kilonewtons and a maximum tensile force of 357.4 kilonewtons so with this in mind we can try uh, designing this with an ISNT 150 per 150 per 10 millimeters um, and we can do the checks per the IS 800 2007 um, because uh, no member in the section is slender the full section is effective so there is no need to adapt uh, for any reduction factor so the maximum on restraint length is going to be of um, 3810 millimeters and assuming that every two alternative nodes are restrained we're going to have uh, this 80.43 Newton per millimeter actual compression. So uh, with that we have uh, We know that this is safe against the actual compression and because the actual tension capacity of the section is more with a 632 kilonewton Than the demand of 357. We know that the section is also safe in tension So with that in mind we have taken these top cords and assign them that particular uh, section type the ISNT 150 per 150 uh, of the Indian steel database okay next we are going to take one of the bottom cords members and uh, do the same so here we have a maximum compressive force of 324.5 kilonewton and a maximum tensile force of 169.4 kilonewton we're going to try the same section as the top chord and because we already know the capacities of this uh, section we know that the tension um, it's uh, here we know we calculated this in the previous slide so it's 635 kilonewton so we know that the tensile force is enough and uh, now we calculate the actual capacity and we have here that uh, the actual capacity is of 222.86 which is 
more than the 800 than the 184.5 uh, that are uh, necessary when we assume that um, when we take this and uh, assume that every node is restrained by the longitudinal tie runner, uh, we get the final actual capacity uh, of 368 kilonewtons, which is more than the 314.85 kilonewtons that are needed. So um, the section is also safe against actual compression. So taking into account that we have also added that same ISMT 150 into um, the top and the bottom cords. Now, when it comes to the web member uh, design, uh, we're going to take one of those members, the B to B member, and uh, we have from the analysis a maximum compressive force of 121.05 kilonewtons and a maximum tensile force of 66. 0.9 kilonewtons. So we're going to try an SIA 80 by 80 by 8.0 and check the member. So first we have the section classification and we are going to have that the section is not slender uh, and due to the length of the member we're going to have that the slenderness radio is taken as a greater of uh, 6 61.6 and 57.4 so we're going to take 61.6 so that takes us into uh, our design compressive uh, strength which is going to be um, of uh, 202.13 kilonewtons which is bigger than 121 uh, compressive force and uh, we can then know that it's safe for compression and when it comes to the, ten the tensile capacity uh, we're going to have a total of 275.5 kilonewton so that it's uh, more than enough to resist our tensile force of 66.9 kilonewton so um, we know that this section the ISA 80 by 80 it's adequate we can add these uh, weft members to the full uh, truss so uh, once we have done this we can run the STL uh, design model to verify if our checks are correct. So the first thing that we do is come here into the code input, select all of our members, go to run and select all of our load cases. So once we do that, we can see here in the code utilization that um, the code check is passing for the majority of the members. Especially, uh, we can see that the members that we selected for design, which is one of the top members, which is uh, this one uh, over here, it's passing the code check with a 0 0.35 um, utilization. So it's this is very low. It's a very good uh, utilization. Um, so we can confirm that these checks are similar to what we calculated. Then we take the top, sorry, then we take the bottom cord that we uh, designed and we can see that it has a 0 0.69 um, utilization. So it's also uh, good and it confirms what we did. But we can also notice that some of the members that we did not check manually have a very high utilization radio. So these two uh, web members in the middle have a 2.45 and a 1.4 uh, utilization radio. So this is something that uh, by hand would take us a lot of time to uh, check. What we can do uh, now with STL is to optimize the rest of the members. These two members that are not passing that code check. So STL allows us to um, verify what we did uh, with our hand calculations and also accelerate our design process by uh, giving us the advantage and the leverage of uh, knowing which of these members are not passing uh, or are not as efficient as we want. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and have a great day.